Well then everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So in this episode, it's time to use some more save some scumming tactics to try and make it through Kefka's Tower without taking like 8 million years to do so. So this will work similarly to the Phoenix Cave, I don't really want to mess around with my saving if I'm not next to something that just made noise because otherwise it could get kind of dangerous if I end up in the middle of nowhere. Everyone, run away. Well, that was just a whole pile of nothing now, wasn't it? So I'm going down still. This area is just a backward C. In fact, a lot of the areas in this mini-segment were laid out surprisingly n more nicely than I thought. All the way left. So now I reach... now I'm two steps below the door. One, two. Now I can use the door to check whether I'm... Uh, whether I've made it in or not. See, uh, my menu didn't open there, so that means that I made it just fine. Let's switch parties, and now I can save with complete safety. Alright, so from here I go up. Let's start using that trick where I can uh, open the menu until when I've reached a wall. Well, that worked out nicely. Pretty good, too, because this is... Uh, well, that messes with my cursor, but I suppose it's not the worst thing in the world. I suppose that would be more useful if I really needed to know when I hit the wall, but... Here it's probably going to be more of a pain in the butt to reset my cursor than anything else. Hopefully that didn't do anything bad. Okay, this is probably config. There we go. Now let's keep going. Oh, whoops. Let's just backtrack that, because I'm not really sure that I can do that properly. It's down right from the chest until I reach another little spot in the ground. The staircases, uh, there's a landing in the staircases and I can kind of slip in there. And it'll stop me from going any farther from that point. Which sets me up nicely to walk down the rest of the staircase without losing a whole lot of steps. Elsewhere, I mean. Left, down. See, if I made a mistake, I'm planning on resetting a whole bunch anyway, so I don't really care. I'll just reset and then go from there. All the way to the left. Now's when I'll be able to tell if I made a mistake or not. And I did not, in fact. Hopefully I didn't tab over one... well... Hopefully I didn't tab over one too many party. Making progress. Still haven't hit one of those great behemoth battles, which is nice. Yes, I do mean literally every single time I hear a noise I'm going to save. It's not as often as you might think, though. Alright, so... Now I should be in the... I should be in the Atmos room now, right? So, I just keep walking down and then I'll hit a door. So a lot of the battles here are hard to run from, so there's no reason to panic if I don't hear running noises fairly quickly. This is a good chance that I just, uh... There's that door. Alright, now all the way to the left. And I'm pretty much right at Atma right now. 
maybe I'll get one more battle on the way there, but it's not a very far walk from here. Right one. The door tells me nicely that I'm in the right spot, so I can save with safety right next to him. Yay! And now I can take actually take him on after this. Yep, let's uh, fight this guy. So, it'll handily set my characters in order because I'll get this text going off before the battle. It's always nice when the bosses decide to shoot themselves in the foot by blabbing like this. Anyway, Gal will come up first, so I just gotta be ready for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mesosaur. Edgar comes up second. Debilitate his face off. It's probably not gonna make any difference whatsoever. But there's a possibility it will. Celeste. Scroll down to the bottom, scroll down to the bottom right, and now let's scroll up to slow. Which just makes him even more of a joke than he already is, to be honest, and uh, I'm Cyan, I hit stuff, yay. So yeah, his first turn isn't exactly enormously threatening, like his first phase. Well, he just hit himself with a fire attack. See how powerful that is? That was unboosted by Debilitator. Unless it was boosted by Debilitator, it's certainly possible, in which case that would be kind of funny, actually, but probably wasn't the case. Alright, apparently Agar blocked that, so that's okay. This should be Celeste, right? So she's still on magic. This is just as likely to heal him as help him, but... I mean, it's just as likely to heal him as it is to hurt him, but... Edgar's still alive. Let's see, is Cyan alive still? I don't think he is. It's not exactly the biggest disaster in the world. Hitting himself with more fire, apparently. That's not something I'm gonna complain about. More Traveler, too. Oh. I probably had Cyan available, I just didn't. Alright, so now he's been hit three times with that, so I'm gonna Runic. Well, that wasn't Runic. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care about Retort. Cyan's not gonna be able to take anything here, so... Cyan is really just doing nothing, to be honest. I'm having him attack, but it's very unlikely that that will actually add up to anything. He probably went into his, oh boy, I'm gonna surround myself with an unknown light and take half an hour to cast a spell phase. Especially with slow status on, which essentially makes the rest of the fight meaningless, because... He gives me three free turns since I have Runic. So, yeah, fairly easy boss fight, but it's definitely harder than some of the ones that are going to be coming up. Gold Dragon, cough, cough. So, now I've got... Oh, gotta close my eyes for that one. I have no idea where Terra is. I can't be given cheap hints like that. So, that's not the end of this segment. That only took three and a half minutes, too, and it was fairly easy. More bosses to come. And so, let's keep walking. I'm gonna try to get to the three switch room in this segment. The only way that won't happen, considering I'm safe scumming, is if I get lost completely. I need to take the blindfold off to check. Fell off a thing. So now let's switch parties. I'm not, it might be superfluous, it might be completely superfluous to save here. Oops, I'm still an item. Because I don't think any of these uh, encounters are inescapable before the next uh, noise I get, but better safe than sorry. I may even just get lost somewhere, who knows. Or maybe these things can somehow kill me. I don't think they can. I think Celeste is invincible here against both the, manu the, both the manu movers, not maneuvers, movers, and the other dude who's... Uh, I almost said he was on steroids, but it's called a steroidite. Why did I do that? That was pointless. Continue going all the way down. 
so I took a step left first so that I don't walk into the other gap. Same number of things to remember, but one less step to take. Left one, down one, to line myself up with the staircase. This room is... Like, the, the navigation, the rooms with these square tiles is a bit annoying because they're... You always have to take a step back or to the side, it seems. But at least there's generally less in inescapable encounters in these rooms, so I'm not going to complain too loudly. Down, right, and let's listen for the let's listen for the door. There's the door I wanted. And I'm on item because I was being dumb and checking that for no reason, even though nobody got hurt. All the way to the left. This room is fairly cramped, so I don't have to go very far on any of my movements. That's probably the longest one. Left. Up. Left. See, so yeah, now I gotta go up this thingy bob. I could probably use it to tell when I've, uh. to tell where I am and, uh using the menu trick, but I'm not going to bother because there's a chest fairly close by. And the encounter I just got there makes it less likely that I'll actually run into a great behemoth. The great behemoths are the worst part. In a normal LLG, I'd be able to take them out fairly efficiently, to be honest. Because one enemy in that encounter can be muted, the another can be confused, the great behemoth can be berserked. And essentially from there you can pretty much just pick off the Great Behemoth, but here I don't want to get into those shenanigans, which is why I'm safe scumming instead. So all the way left should take me out this door. It takes me one step too far, but that's no big deal, because obviously I can just take one step back. And now this lines me up fairly nicely with the chest all the way down. Hopefully I won't get a battle here because I don't want to redo that last bit. There we go. So there's my chest and more... no, not more importantly, that's a force shield. But also, somewhat importantly, uh, the noise that comes with the chest. So now I take one step down, all the way to the right. This hit, allows me to hit another piece of rubble. Much better than going down and right there, even though that might have looked efficient, because that would have sent me way past the door that I'm trying to go into, so. Down, this should take me down the conveyor belt, which saves a few steps. Less chance of uh, great behemoths, I guess. But I've gone a while without a battle, the chance of me getting into this next door are probably still slim. Right, down. Now I hit the door. Just two more steps, actually, so maybe I will make it into the door. Right one down one. Now I go left. So I actually made it. That's nice. And that's practically a guarantee that I went the right direction. I'm pretty sure no battles in this room can kill me. Uh, did something just use Peppa? You better not all kill yourselves before I can escape. <laughs> that would seriously be irritating after I just said that no encounter in this room could kill me. I'd end up losing because an encounter killed itself. <laughs> that would just be the worst. I wouldn't technically be wrong, but... Whoever got exploded... Yeah, second person from the top, that's Celeste. And here I thought she was immune to just about everything, but I suppose I was proven wrong. Oh yeah, and I didn't uh, save, did I? I just healed up my characters. Again, making more progress than I thought I would. This is probably the worst bit, though. This is the next one. Because I've got to go quite far out of my way for a chest. Actually, I should have gauged whether that what was in the chest was even useful. No, wait, it's four summer, isn't it? I probably want that. Back one. One, two, three. And out the door. Navigation here is still very simple. It's just I gotta 
restart probably sometimes because of the Great Behemoths. So far it hasn't happened yet, but I have feeling I got extremely lucky with that. Thus far, at least. This is probably going to contain a Great Behemoth or something. They can actually- no, it didn't. The Great Behemoths can kill me with Meteor, but I don't want to wait around for them to use it because they don't use it super often. And they're not going to kill me with anything else, so I'm just going to reset, obviously, if that happens. Also, I'm not sure if the battle will cycle to anything different if I just let myself die. It might just stay the same one, over and over and over again, and then it would practically be like Groundhog Day. There we go, there's my Force Armor. This team gets a few useful things. A few useful little toys to play with. Wow, if I make it through this bit, I'm practically home free. Down. I had some headaches here during my test runs, so hopefully it doesn't go badly as there. Right. But considering the luck I've had so far, that might almost be asking for a little much. <laughs> but so far, it seems like I made it through that stretch as well. Alright, I think I gotta go up next. Oh, somebody just bit the dust. Oh, I escaped. Nice. <laughs> so as long as I didn't... not going, going to mess up the, uh... up and right after the battle. Even if I do, it shouldn't be hard to recover, honestly. Let's just quickly heal up. Alright, go a little bit extra, just because I want to make sure that I've walked far enough. Because the doors in this area are weird. Oh, right. Can't save until I've, uh, switched parties. The doors in this area are weird. If I take one step into the doorway, and, uh, don't actually enter the door, I will actually be completely barred from entering. Be by just by holding up, at least. Because uh, the door will shut behind me when I open the menu, and when that happens, for some reason the exit becomes accessible. Inaccessible. And that would probably throw me off very much so. Especially since I wouldn't know where I am, even being directly sitting on my quote-unquote safety zone that's supposed to be where I know exactly where I am, so that's doubly dangerous. I don't even need to worry about this guy, he's a chump. This is... Because I've got Reflect on, he can actually physically attack me, but... It really doesn't matter. This is Gao. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is, uh, Edgar, I might as well bioblast him and poison him. It's not really gonna make a difference, but... It's the thought that counts. At least Celeste's holy cast will be hurting him and not healing him now. For whatever that's worth anyway, probably not much. So yeah, might as well just select the drill and then continue holding A from there. Pretty much this boss, if you are immune to th thunder and you don't have reflect on, he can't possibly hurt you. Whoa, what was that? Oh, did I just use backblade? <laughs> what? so random. But yeah, this boss, if you if you are, are immune to thunder and don't have reflect on, he can't possibly hurt you. And I think that in my circumstances where I'm immune to physical attacks with Gao, even with reflect on, he can't hurt me. It at least allows him to use physical attacks, but Oh, not to mention Celeste is probably immune to everything as well. So yeah. Dumb boss. Really dumb boss. 
menu trick to make sure I've gotten rid of that dialog box A-OK. -okay. And now I just go left in town to reach. This area is just so infested with save points, it makes the final dungeon actually ironically very forgiving. There's only one area in here where I can't save scum my way through, and that's the area after the three switch room. Which is really a lot of the reason why that's going to be broken up into another segment there. All the way up. I've almost made it out of the area, which even has encounters. So, do the squiggly, go to the right, not very far, go all the way down, well, one parting shot. Hopefully there's no outsiders, because I can't run from them either. Okay, good. Nothing weird happening. Wow, I'm getting quite lucky so far. It's pretty rare, I think, to get through Kafka's Tower without seeing any great behemoths. Down to the bottom, and this takes me into my first voyage into the Three Switch Room. Party 2 is the first to make it there. One, two to the left. Brings me in line with the staircase, and the room's just before the Three Switch Room in this room as well. They mirror each other, which means I only have to remember them once, which is double bonus. There's my switch. Switch to party one. Oh, nah, there's no point. Whatever party that is. You know, I'm Almost thinking that will end up being its own segment, because another 13 minutes, that's about 20 on its own. So yeah, maybe I'll drop it into another segment. Then again, Terrors is just walking, isn't it? Whatever, I'll figure it out. Possibly, see you next time.